So being somebody who's in that side of the system, how do you view the other side, right? The more independent side, when we talk about the artists being, you know, independent and not getting signed by labels and that whole perspective the, um, against that. And even a lot of executive types mm -hmm. that aren't at a label, right? They're still like the young business professionals in music, but they're kind of finding their own different ways and navigating. How do you view that side and what makes you choose the side that you've chosen? Yeah, I mean, I, as far as the artists, I always say, you know, at the end of the day, you still need a team. So whether you have a label or not, you still need a team in order to successfully put your music, promote your music, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the indie line is not for everyone. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, I feel like, to me, honestly, I think the indie lane is best for artists who've already built a following and are already like, you know, been able to make money on their own without a label's help. You know, if you're a veteran, like if you're a rapper, like that came out in the 90s or whatever the case may be, and you had your success, why well, you should be signed to a label in 2020. You know what I'm saying? You have your catalog, you can go do your shows, you can't do them now. But once it's over with, you can go back to doing your shows, yeah. selling your merch, et cetera. You don't need a label because you already built the brand up to be what it is. Mm -hmm. For indie artists, you know, it's kind of like you're playing. I feel like nowadays with a lot of indie artists, you're you're playing a game of luck. Like, you know, artists that kind of pop off now, like Lil Nas X is like once in a lifetime. That's luck. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That is pure luck. Great record. Don't, don't get it wrong. It's a great record. It's pure luck, you know what I'm saying? And everyone can't do what Lil Nas X did, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's rare that an artist will pop off with one, and sometimes, you know, you have, and he eventually signed to a label, you know, after he had already popped, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So you have some artists who are able to do them by themselves and be able to have that success and maintain that success. But did you have some artists who want to take it to the next level? You know, what, you know, with Lil Nas X, signed to Columbia Records, it took it to the next level. You know, by putting Billy Ray Cyrus on it, he went diamond, he won the Grammys, like he did all of that due to the label's help. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like if the indie game works, and it all depends on what an artist want out of their career. You know, you have some artists who don't care about winning awards, don't care about, you know, all the, the video press and going on Jimmy Fallon and all of that stuff, all the things that a label provide. Because basically a label has the relationships, you know, the relationships with Spotify and Apple and all of the new news press variety and everything like that, where indie artists might not have that. So if you're an artist, say like, I don't know, Tech Nine, you know, who never really cared about having the labels push, right? I just want to make my music, I want to tour, make money. That's totally fine. Um, to pick up from the next question about executives, um, I often think well, it depends on the person and, and where they're coming from. Like if I was a person, if I grew up in Atlanta, if I grew up in Los Angeles, if I grew up in New York in a major city where things were popping off, then yeah, of course, not, why not do the indie role, right? Because you are in a big enough market to where you can do that. Off markets are. So, you know, so ain't nobody looking down there. So it wasn't, I didn't really have the resources to to pretty much do the indie role as an executive you know what I'm saying? because like i said i grew up you know i'm a young kid i'm from the projects didn't come from money so at that point in time i'm just trying to make enough to feed myself you know so for me i felt like the best route for me was to go the corporate route until i'm able to you know garner up the brand build the relationships have the success and if i choose to then i can go the indie route you sure. know so I think it all really depends on the person itself. But like I said, I chose the more co corporate structure um, mainly because I felt like just being where I was from and having a disadvantage and getting in a corporate system, building relationships, you know, it would allow me to have the choice to do the indie route or stay corporate if I choose to. Right. So that's pretty much why. Oh, that makes sense. You always have to understand where you are and then what position is going to get you to where you need to be. So that makes sense.
Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Uh, being because being at a label, like you said, the relationships just naturally happen versus you having to hustle one by one. Now you're just around it all, at, at all times. And we all know each other. It's a very, it's a, it's a cliche, but it's a very, very small industry. Everyone really knows everyone. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You, <laughs> you go to an event, you see the same people. And it's always, you know, I, I hear people always say, like, people always try to network up. Now I need to know who the CMVP is, the EVP. Like, no, really, it's networking across. Yeah. Like, I'm in group chats full of assistants and coordinators. We all know each other. We all have relationships with each other. We all hang out. You know what I'm saying? Me and the interns are cool. Me and, and me and the next guy who's coming up behind me are cool, you know? Mm-hmm. So I always say like, to me, it's always best to kind of just, not just network up, but network across and build those relationships. Cause in five years, 10 years, y'all are going to be the new CVPs. Y'all are going to be the new EVPs. And then you have pull, you know, cause at the end of the day, everyone wants to have some type of power in decision-making, you know what I'm saying? So I see artists that I really, really like I'm like, yo, I'm in a position where I can sign this artist, then I can do so. You know what I'm saying? And the same thing, like, I have a homie that might want to be in the business, and I can make a phone call to give him an internship or give him an assistant role. I'm able to do that because I have good relationships coming up, you know, so, yeah. Got you. Got you. It's a long game. Long game. Is it? And I got to ask it while you're here, because we kind of talked about both sides, but again, there's there's this whole idea of you don't need labels or labels are evil. You know, artists try, you know, have all this reasoning for not getting signed, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what do you say to that being somebody who's in that side of things? Um, I mean, I, I will say this. You do not need a label. Right. Nowadays with the internet, you you have the option to put your music out. You have the option to promote your music. Everything that a label was so valuable for, you know, everyone has access to do it themselves. Right. However, I will say this. A lot of people who downplay a label, well, it depends on where they come from. If they of someone that's trying to get noticed and they downplay a label, it's mainly because no one signed them. That's pretty much that's one reason. Another reason why if you are an artist and you downplay the label, it's basically just an indicator that you did bad business. You know, you signed you signed a contract that you didn't get looked over, you didn't read, you didn't have a lawyer look over, you didn't even have a lawyer. Like, you basically did bad business at the end of the day, right? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, a label's job is to, it's a business. You know, in business, your goal is to make money. You know what I'm saying? And as an artist, you have to figure out and negotiate a way that you can kind of come in like a mutual partnership with the company versus being someone that's in debt with the company because you got your advance and you blew it on foreign cars and you didn't think about it saving it or investing it into other things. Right. One of the, the biggest misconceptions that you hear a lot about labels, and it's something I have to learn over time. You know, artists are always like, you know, I'm going to own my masters. The, like, you know, you hear people talk about, like, yo, you got to own your masters, own your masters, right? Here's the thing, right? If a label is going to spend one to two million dollars up front for you to record your album, put the album out, pay your team, et cetera, et cetera, they have to have something. They're paying for something, right? The master recording, you know, is an asset over time, Right? It's your yeah. catalog, right? Yeah. And especially now when streaming is at an all-time high, the catalog really kind of makes more money than the new music that comes out, you know? So that's why you always hear about the Beatles catalog or mm-hmm. Rolling Stones catalog or Michael Jackson's catalog, no pun intended. Um, just all the, the catalogs that are super, super valuable and they're worth millions of dollars now, right? Yeah. So you want to own your masters, if you can, but at the same time, you got to realize the label didn't put millions of dollars into recording this project. The project belongs to the label. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you were to put your own money up and do a distribution deal, which a lot of people do, then it's a different conversation you can have, right? You know, like every day, the infamous cash money deal, I think it was 85-15 split. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Birdman negotiated that. 
You ain't never heard Birdman downplaying the label. Birdman got money, money. <laughs> yeah. You ain't, you ain't never heard Birdman downplaying the label. Because he got what he wanted. Yeah. So it's all, about, yeah, it's all about how you negotiate, man. And at the end of the day, one of the, th one of the things I will say, and this is just me just over, seeing things over time, right? A lot of the kids that get signed, you know, a lot of, we come from, you know, a lot of the artists come from like poverty stricken environments where they don't know nothing. They don't know much, right? And you're a new artist, someone's waving around a million dollar check. Like, Yo, you sign this right now, I'm gonna get you walk out of here with a million dollars. You don't technically walk out with a million, it covers everything else. But it's like, yo, I'm gonna get me million out of check. You come from the projects, you know what I'm saying? You, you go back to the, like, you, in your mind, you're like, yo, I'm gonna sign this piece of paper, get this million dollar check, and go on about my life. You're not thinking about the long game, right? Yeah. Labels do take advantage of that, right? Yeah. That's why I think it's very important for people like me, you, other people coming into the music business to be in those positions where we can look out for the younger artists that's coming up because at the end of the day, a lot of young artists don't know any better. And it's not until over time when the money dried up, when you're not hot no more, but that's the reality. All the young artists popping right now ain't gonna be hot after a while, right? Ow.